Dan here with Freedom Provider. Today I am installing a Fister Bedford uh, faucet and uh, connectors for my for my shower uh, setup, bath and shower. The model number on this one is the 801-WS2-BDCC. I'm not going to do an, un, in, an unboxing. It does come with um, two different types of uh, vanity uh, handles, metal and uh, like a clear acrylic or plastic handles. Um, it does come with its uh, supply line pipe and pretty much everything you see here plus the guts that, that go in the back of the, uh, behind the wall. The one thing that you will probably reuse is the supply line nipple uh, that comes from uh, the main pipe from behind the wall to here. Or in my situation, I had to get one that was an inch shorter and um, make the adjustments accordingly from there. So let's get to it and review some of the things you're going to need in order to do this project. Okay. so. Just to be full disclosure for everything here, I am not a plumber. I am not a professional. I'm a DIY home improvement guy trying to uh, do projects at home with the knowledge I have and what I've gained. So all that, I just want to give you that a heads up. Some of the things you're going to need for this job um, is they kind of give it to you right in here in the uh, in the instructions, you'll need Teflon tape or, or that white plumber's tape. Uh, you'll need a propane torch, the a Phillips screwdriver, an adjustable wrench. It's a must have for this type of project, along with a pipe wrench, uh, safety goggles. And then uh, you also need, probably would be helpful to have a flashlight and some uh, some towels or shop towels or cloth to clean up any messes. Uh, some other things that you might need if you're going to be doing this project along with the propane torch would be like uh, your soldering, uh, if you're going to be soldering pipe with a little bit of flux, um, or um, instead of that, if you're not going to solder and you're not comfortable using a torch, you can uh, kind of try to dry fit everything and then opt into buying uh, what's called a quick connect or shark bite connections where they essentially it's a bunch of teeth that are inside the connector and when it inserts onto the pipe it bites on and it, it won't release unless you are using a, a tool to release it. Those are super easy and it makes the job of doing any plumbing uh, 10 times easier than uh, doing a traditional soldering connection. The other type of connections you could uh, use or find at your um, local home uh, home improvement store would be possibly a, a crimping tool of, or a crimping style connection where you uh, fit them together and then there's like a little uh, bump over it, uh, over the connection and you use a specialized tool to crimp it down. Um, I don't know the cost of those. Uh, the shark bite connections are what I used uh, for the connections that needed to kind of require a solder and they worked just fine and I didn't experience any leaks. Give yourself plenty of time to do this project. Uh, if you can, plenty of space. Uh, it wouldn't be bad to have someone assist if you're not comfortable with uh, plumbing. Um, and uh, be prepared to make a trip or two to the home improvement store because I think I made three trips uh, just because there were certain things that I wanted to have uh, that I didn't want to reuse. So um, with that said, let's get to the installation video. Okay, so five years ago when we bought our house, this uh, uh, was installed big and it was the cheapest installation they could put in. Uh, you can see it moves. It's horrible. Um, this turns this way. This turns this way, which is kind of weird. Now, I installed this guy here. So when you turn this on. All right. Shower's working. But that's not supposed to be happening. 
So the, the diverter in here that diverts the water up is not working properly. Um, plus, this is really tacky. I'm going to fix that. Okay, so here's my hot water tank. These are the water lines going up. Uh, this is your, this is my, uh, that's the, this is the hot. And th this is the hot and this is the cold. And then these are running along here. And right here is my bathtub. That's the bathtub there, you can see that. And I have my cold supply line and my hot supply line running there. And you can, you can touch these and I can feel that that's a little warm because I just ran the water. Now normally, you would go back here and you would turn these off and shut off the supply heading up there. But the cool thing that's got that I got going on for me is whoever did the install up top put some cutoff valves up there, similar to a toilet. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so this is the wood paneling that I have and uh, thanks to a little boy we, he's been picking at it, which really made Daddy pretty upset. So this is going to have to get replaced. So this just comes off, and then move that out of the way. And so here we are. We have my supply lines down here that I can just turn off with a quarter turn. Okay, and then I can drain out the water um, in the line if I need to, but I don't think I will. And then look at this. This is just, just a block. There's a piece of wood screwed in there, in through here. So I'm going to take this thing out, and then I think I just got some screw-in connections there, which might make this a lot easier. Um, and then I'll probably have like a solder connection, uh, right here. So yeah, let's, let's take these out and see what we got. Okay. If your drain's got a big gap in it. Just for one or two steps, it might wouldn't be a bad idea to close it. All right, these things here, you just pop them out. And inside there is a little screwdriver. Uh, so you'll do that for each side. Uh, this one probably has the same. I'll probably pot work on that one to pop that one out as well. Um, because all this stuff has to come off the front so the back guts can come out. This will twist off. Man, this needs, needs some TLC. <laughs> so I'm going to do that and then we'll uh, take a look at the back. All right. So I had to use the pipe wrench on the other side to get this loosened up. Um, but this usually just threads out just like that. And then use this opportunity to clean up. So I've added a few towels at the bottom and now I'm ready to remove this fixture here. Okay. 
Okay, so this is a, a shark bite fitting and there's a bunch of little teeth on the inside of this that is gripping this pipe and this pipe. To separate that, you normally there's a, something that you would clip on here and squeeze down. But through a little research, I found that if you use an adjustable wrench and get it right on the pipe, I'm doing this one up top because I think this one's going to be the easiest. All right. The goal is to get this little tiny plastic sleeve depressed into the shark bite, thereby releasing the fitting. We'll give this a try and see if we can get it to work. Okay, to give myself the leverage I need. I'm taking this, these little uh, knobs off. And by doing that, this thing should be able to wiggle out. I don't know, I wouldn't recommend the, doing this with your own, or with the new one, but maybe I will have to do that, I don't know, to make that connection. Should come right off, there it is. All right, that's a shark bite connection there. Um, and if I can reuse it, it would be really nice and I wouldn't have to do any soldering, which would be super cool. All right, so this is the uh, main component that we're going to install. These are protective things that just come off and these will slide in here and we'll make our connections like we did before. Uh, I have to take these components off of my original, uh, my old piece. This will reconnect uh, up to the top and I'm hoping it'll go on easier <laughs> than the last one because the last one I had to take apart this assembly in order to get this up there. Um, and then uh, this will be the bottom assembly here that will feed the faucet. The interesting thing though, um, this set does not come with a, the set does not come with one of these. So you need to save this feet main line pipe, clean it up and separate it from your old uh, connection and then reattach it. All right, in order to get this, this piece loosened it's pretty tough so this gap here this notch is a great player you can put a screwdriver or i just use the end of my wrench and and slotted it in there okay once you got that in there uh then you take your your pipe wrench and try not to get it on the threads which is the uh, part at the end there and then you twist and well i i wedged it in there to, to loosen it up and then once you get it, once you unlock it, you should have enough force to grip it with some rubber gloves and then use the pipe, uh, uh, your pipe wrench to hold on to the pipe while you twist it and, and loosen it up. And that's that. This is what we need as our main supply line. Okay, so in order to reuse this, you want to replace your uh, pipe 
you want to replace all the old pipe thread. So you got to peel this stuff off. And to do that, it's usually pretty easy, but it, it just requires a lot of patience. Get rid of your old pipe thread, put on new. You'll be glad you did later. Because this pipe thread is used to prevent water from going moving up and down the seams or the threads of the pipe. So take a good moment to get that cleaned off and then back at it uh, when you, once you get it all cleaned off, you can, you could probably use like a wire brush or something to um, clean this off as well. Okay, this is your pipe tape or tape thread. Um, threaded seal tape. So this stuff here, you just, it's very thin and take your, take your pipe and you get some started around your seal. Okay. Once you get it started, A liberal amount is good. Sometimes you start at the, the edge, edge threads first. And then once you get it in there and it's good, just get a, get a pull and stretch it on there. And there you have a okay so it's important to note that you uh, looking at the old one uh, there was no pipe tape um, installed on these um, outer pieces here and these are the supply lines really so the reason why there is no pipe tape on those is because these supply lines uh, hang on let me get it with the spotlight these supply lines have this little rubber grommet inside that will that will um, meet up with the uh, pipe and seal off that water, preventing water from spraying out. If you want to still thread them with pipe, it's not going to hurt anything. So, um, and I may yet do that. Okay, so I took this um i don't know how long these fittings last there's plastic inside uh and all that stuff this is the old one i uh wound up separating it from from this piece here and bought a newer fitting um this is was seven bucks and some change so um i wanted to get a new this is a shark bite fitting it just pops on you don't need to do any type of uh soldering uh, which or so you won't need a blow torch or anything like that um since these kind of just scoot on and then you can twist them i'm hoping to um install this and this component here and then hook up this and just twist this on um, and thread that into the piece so that way I don't have to wedge it out. I should, probably should have done that on my uh, uninstallation, but you know, it is what it is. So let's get Okay, so once you get this in, you just give it a push and it's on. That's it. And it's not coming off unless you depress that thing, which for me, it was a bear trying to get this, the old one separated from this because I had to, um, I had to use a, um, crowbar, <laughs> two crowbars and my wife helping me pull this thing off. So we're going to give this an install here. Okay. That is connected. Um, now we don't have any.
gets a little cluttered in your bathroom when you're doing projects like this so shoot I'm afraid this fitting is going to be too small once it's threaded up it might be all right but that's a pretty tight fitting. Maybe I should have measured before I did this, but we'll give it a shot and see if we can get it to connect. Okay, so getting the old one and the new one set up I have a lot more play on this old one than I do on the new one, and I don't know how I'm going to make the change to make this connection work. The I thought is I could change the coupler again, which would be a, pay, a bear to get done, undone, uh, but that would probably be have, what I'd have to do. Um... I could shorten this pipe a little bit, take this off and shorten that much on the pipe so that when this chokes up, it chokes up a little bit more. And I think I might do that. So that way, um, this will sit a little higher. Um, or I can try to fidget with it some more. The other option, I don't really want to mess with this, is, is getting into tile work and, and, and tearing this out, um, which could be a problem. But I think if I shorten that pipe up just a snudge, uh, just a smidge, it'll, it'll bring this up a, enough to uh, make the connection. All right, I measured. When you hold this thing up, and you put this thing to the back of it. There's a 3 8 difference, um, mainly because there's a 3 8 difference, mainly because of this riser here. Um, right here, these these both are 5 8 from threat for the threads for both of these. That's the same. But when you measure them, that raises this up a full 3 8 because of this riser here. So my solution would be to choke off right about at that line. It's a little under three eighths just to give myself a little bit more play to me marry up and meet that piece. So to do that, this is a pipe, pipe cutter, um, and wherever this line is, is where it's going to cut. And you just roll it around um, and supposed to be able to get all the way around, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. I might, even, I might only get a half of a cut, I think. I don't know. But we'll try to give it as best of a... And then you just tighten this guy and keep doing your roll. As you do that, it scores it. So I got the backside cut. Now I need to cut the outside. So I'm going to use something like this. It's what I got. I need new blades. It's not the best. 
safety goggles on and All right, not my finest work, but I had to, I, I used what I had available to uh, cut off the outer end of this pipe, um, which only took a little bit. Um, and now it's a little shorter. And I'm hoping we can put this whole thing back together and just call it a day, because I've been spending way too much time on this damn thing. Um, <laughs> So the shark bite will go up here again. <clears throat> okay, I'm not gonna push that up all the way yet. I think I'm kind of back to where I was on my previous setup. Actually, no, I should be a little bit better. Yeah, but I have room to go on that shark butt, I think. Look at this, too. This thing is too low. <laughs> so, so, uh, so frustrating. Um, all right, so I'm going to give this a push. There it goes. Got to push it all the way because that's what you can accounted for. Alrighty, so. I finally got this connection put together and cinched that up. So this was the original piece that was on here. And after I got this connected, you could see where this was lining up. It was I'm trying to show you here if I can. Um, this piece was just as you can see here, it was a little too low for my hole. Instead of having a huge gaping hole in the tile, um, the goal is to cut this down and bring this piece up. So, um, but instead of soldering and doing all that, I went to the store and picked up a, a new uh, adapter piece, which this is pretty big, but it'll choke this down a little bit. And this is a quick connector, like a shark bite. And it will connect here. Now, if you can see, when we connect that on, it's going to be the same length. So my thought is to cut off around here so that this can cinch up here. Maybe even cut off a little higher. And then once this cinches up, it'll even out or at least come to the bottom of this here. That's where we're at. So maybe I could have choked off a little bit more here to bring this up, but even with that up a little bit, um, we can cut off here and we're, we're good to go. So I'm gonna undo this and have kind of my dry fit, make sure it works. Um, should have done a lot of just dry fitting earlier, but um, We'll put new tape on here and then we'll get rolling on this. All right, so here's what we did here. We have taken, this is where there's kind of like a little divot where you could already cut it off, but I need to go a little further than that. So after much measuring, I've got the, got the pipe here. And then, so we're just going to roll around after a revolution, you give it a little turn and you go again, give it another turn 
every time. You might need to get that. It's a turning. You can see now I'm creating a nice smooth line in here. This is a pretty thick pipe, so we're getting there. There you go. So that's a custom, custom fitting right there. Better hope it works, right? Alrighty. Now we gotta pay. fit just gonna clear I'm, I'm hoping Lord bless this fitting in thy mercy Look at that, we have a straight on fitting there. That's gonna marry nicely here. We'll get this working here soon. Okay, so this is the pipe I had from the previous. And that's just gonna thread in there. Once that thread's in here, the main connection will go on. I have access to this uh, backside. I figured I might as well use this. There's an opportunity to get in here and, and start threading that. Okay, so now that we have um, the main connections put to put on here, we can connect our supply lines. Okay, so we'll tighten that up a little bit and then um, we'll open everything up and do a quick test before we install the handles and all that other stuff.
here's the moment of truth. I'm going to turn on the hot water. Nothing to show really back here. I'm testing to see if there's any moisture coming off of this. Nothing here. So in doing a fitting test, I just um, took one of the handles here and turned it on. And did the same for this. And then if I wanted to, I can Whoa, tremendous water pressure coming out of that shower head. Obviously this whole contraption is not flush yet. So once we get that in place and firmed up, then we'll, um, uh, it'll be a little, be a lot nicer setup. Okay. So these little black spacers, there's a little pack of these guys here. You put, I put one over, over this pipe and then just, this just threads on. And then, uh, these things thread inside here. doesn't matter. This thing will just kind of push on. And so what are these black things for, right? These black things are for your vanity covers. So this kind of slides over top. Leave. I guess you don't have to thread these all the way in or maybe you do and you pull the whole if I pull the whole thing forward you can see how far that sticks out which means I might have to get a shorter pipe um, oh no let's put that over That doesn't look right. <laughs> that does not look right at all. But the thread is right here, which means I would need to either leave this out. The instructions aren't very clear either. Um, I'm gonna take a look. So, um, these black grommets, well, they'll, they'll thread on to here. And if you want to recess this back further, pre-thread them into here, and then you can just screw them into place. Um, why is mine pulled out so far? Well, um, the... My wife really likes these shiny ones here. Um, let me focus on that. Okay. So I thought these shiny ones would be really cool. And they give you kind of these little tabs, which we didn't like. Um, we didn't like these little green, these little things. We wanted hot and cold. So, but the hot and cold tabs didn't have any color on them. So I picked up some ribbon and stuck it in the back of the cold one. So it would be a cool cold and a, and a red hot. But you know what? They don't fit inside here. And I was trying to figure out what in the heck was going on. 
and these screws are too short for here. Well, guess what? You can't, you can't take these and put them in here. No, no, no. These go for this and they have a longer screw. The metal ones get the hot and cold. And they have a shorter screw as well. So that was a problem because I was I kept trying to thread a screw in and it wasn't working. Well, turns out only these gen these like kind of fancy water looking things. I don't know why not make all these the same if you're gonna put them in one kit. Then you get the customer a choice to do what they like. They can mix and match, and you can do this and that. I don't know. So I'm going to see. If I can transfer my little uh, red and blue labeling that I pulled off of here and put them into the back there, but I don't think it's going to tra be transparent like I thought. <sighs> also, if I take this taut like it is, I need a shorter pipe. <laughs> and that is probably going to be another trip to the store, unless I can find one in my junk pile downstairs. Okay, so I found a four inch pipe, but I think this is for a gas line, um, but it was too short. This connection is six inches and the, I could either reduce, um, there's a couple things I can do. Um, I can get a new pipe. I can cut this one down and re-thread it. Or now that I found the right uh, pieces parts here, I might be able to have the whole attachment go further back and choke this up. And I think I'm gonna try that route first. Okay, so even with this loosened up and kind of pushed back as far as it can go. If I push this in, the whole assembly is not going to go in right. So I need a shorter pipe, which I'm going to try to fab with my father because um, he's got something that I can cut some threads with, I believe. So I'm going to reinstall this, get it all choked up like it should be, and then get these back on and then this will be the final thing that I need to shorten up and that should be it for the install. Okay, so with a shorter uh, five inch nipple here or pipe, I was able to choke this up but it's still loose and, and still got a little bit of a gap here, uh, probably like a quarter of an inch. Um, hoping to loosen all this up, push this back a little bit, and then on the other side, uh, so normally this would mount up to a stud on the wall and would screw in, but I don't have that. So I'm going to um, take a piece of wood here and bolt that up and try to uh, mount some wood here to, to pull it out so that this way um, I can pull that whole assembly back. that back. Once I get that back, I can tighten these up. So in this section, I managed to find some bolts and screws or nuts that would match up with the 
uh, fitting. I measured where the holes would be in the board, drilled some pilot holes, and right now I'm installing the uh, nuts up to the bolt, and then we'll tighten those down. All right, so I'm very pleased with how solid that is. Uh, I got tension coming on the back side. This is secure, it's not loose. Um, these are a little loose, but as I tighten these, it's gonna pull against that. And it will tighten them up against the wall. didn't change that gap at all so way better oh my gosh oh so nice to be done with this project okay so one final look there I got that mounted in and pulled and, and cinched into the wall just to kind of keep it taut and everything looks dry we've been using the shower the past couple days so uh, past day or so so I have no wetness. The next phase would be replacing this ugly thing with a piece of wood, just using this as a template. But that is for another day. Thanks so much for watching today's video. This project took way longer than I expected. It looked simple, but it, the, with the customizations and, and kind of some of the tweaks that I had to do, it took a little bit longer. I mean, it, 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 for me, it took all day. And then on top of that, I had to um, make a couple trips to the store to just get things dialed in just right. So uh, with all that said, though, I now have a solid installation and the faucet knobs actually turn the right way it's amazing so um, i'm very happy with that and now i'm going to have years of operation on this thing without any problems and that's at least what i expect and so a day's worth of work to get years worth of uh, trouble free uh, use out of it is worth it in my book uh, if you want to see more videos like this or uh, have a question of, of your own feel free to let me know in the comments below Thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and I hope today's video provided you a little bit more knowledge and hopefully saved you some time to provide some freedom in your life. 
Take care. This is Dan with The Freedom Provider. We'll see you next time.